Hey there friends, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, back for another Assassin's Creed Valhalla video, and today we are checking out another build for the game. Last time we checked out the Warlord. That was a build that required no helix items, but today that is not the case. And the build we're gonna talk about today is called the Viper. And as always, there's a few guiding principles I wanna talk about that will kind of influence and shape the overall trajectory of this build. Now, the first thing I really wanted to focus on was a poisoned theme build outside of just a straight Draugr set. Obviously, you could complete the entire poison build by using just all of the Draugr pieces, Mournful Cry, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to combine things, we're here to mix and match, but I wanted everything to kind of revolve around the element of poison. I think it's something I didn't get to experience enough during my progression, and I'm definitely looking towards something poison-based for my time in the future content updates and DLC. Now, the second guiding principle is that I didn't want this entire build to be a store-bought build. I wanted you guys to be able to pick up a piece here, a piece there, and make this one work. It does combine some elements from the Helix store, it combines some elements from outside of the Helix store, but ultimately, over time, you guys will be able to piece this build together. Now, of course, you can spend money and buy items in the shop, that's just the way the world works, and I didn't want that to limit me in this build. So we are gonna dive into some Helix store items, but hey, if you don't wanna spend the money, that's okay, just check out the video because I think you guys are gonna enjoy it nonetheless. Now, the final guiding principle was to build something that was incredibly fluid in combat. Last time we talked about flexibility, this time, I wanted to talk about fluidity, the ability to move from enemy to enemy, to move across a battlefield seamlessly, and to be able to string together a number of combinations to pretty much just leave a wake of bodies behind me. Now, those are the three guiding principles, and with those three things in mind, let's dive in and let's talk about the items. Now, I mentioned this is a poison-themed build, and with poison, the first thing you're gonna think about is the Draugr set, and we are, in fact, using two pieces of the Draugr set. In this case, we're gonna use the hood and the chest piece. We're not really worried about weight in this build. There's not really a weight component, so we don't have to worry about that too much. You probably could change up the pieces if you wanted to. I chose to use the cloak and the armor. Now, the good thing about the Draugr set is the effect, of course, increases your attack when hitting a poisoned enemy. That's gonna give you a plus 10 attack when you hit a poisoned enemy, and that's a buff on the player, so you're gonna get that plus 10 attack pretty much all the time. It's a really good two-piece bonus, especially in conjunction with other things. And when I show you guys the gameplay, I want you to look in the bottom left-hand corner and look at all of those rune markers above my health bar. That's showing you just how many buffs are active at one time. And it's not the greatest system in the world. You kind of have to check the symbol out, then go into the details panel of a piece of gear and see which one corresponds with it. But you can see there are a lot of things going on, and that's really at the core of this build. Now, the other three pieces are part of the Niflheim set. This is one of the newer sets in the game, and the reason for that is the special perk. Increase your critical chance after each kill. There's nothing better than that. It stacks three times a 20-second duration, going up to plus 30 crit. My god, that is so much crit chance that you're adding to your weapon just by using two pieces of the Niflheim gear. Now, the whole reason we're using the Niflheim gear and pumping up our crit is, of course, because we want to use Mournful Cry as our main hand weapon. I did mention we're gonna use the Draugr set. This is the weapon that's part of the Draugr set, but you can buy it by itself, you can get it from Reda, and it is just fantastic in the scope of the Viper build. Critical hits, temporarily poison your weapon. That's gonna give you a five second buff with a 10 second cooldown. But in conjunction with the poison abilities in the game, you're really never going to not be able to poison enemies. And it all ties together because we're pumping up our crit, we're gonna get a lot of crits, we're gonna get a lot of poison damage, and it all just kind of snowballs as you'll see in the gameplay. Now, I don't know what it is about the Seeks in the game, but they are just fantastic. In our offhand, we're gonna use the Modronet Ceremonial Seeks, increase your critical chance after a kill. Now, you don't need to kill with this weapon to get that bonus. You're getting an eight second duration, an eight second buff, and you're getting another plus 30 crit. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. So we have the 30 crit from the dagger, we've got the additional crit from the Niflheim armor, but wait, it gets even better. We're gonna move to the bow quickly here and talk about the Viper bow. This is another light bow, increases your critical chance after a hit. And just like the dagger, just like in the last video, you don't actually need to use the bow to gain the benefits. So just to break it all down so you understand how much crit we are actually getting in this build, you can get a potential plus 30 to crit because of the Niflheim armor, you can get a plus 30 crit on the Madronet Ceremonial Seeks, and another plus 30 crit because of the Viper Bow. I mean, that is 90 crit 
off of those three different kind of groupings of items. And remember, it all goes back to the mournful cry. Your critical hits temporarily poison your weapon, and poison damage just quickly eviscerates enemies. That's just the way poison works in this game. It's just so good at taking down little enemies, big enemies, bosses, it doesn't really matter. Now we can take this build to the next level, but to do that, we're gonna need a lot of runes. And I wanna address something because I saw it in the comments on the last video. Runes are very subjective to what a player has available to them, what they've collected during their progression. There's no easy way to farm runes, so you pretty much have to make work whatever you have available to you. That's always going to be the case with runes until there's a better way to collect them and farm them. Now, it doesn't really matter where you put these runes, but here are some of my favorites. I use the Chained Fury rune, which increases my attack after each hit. I know that's not really in the build, but doing more attack damage is going to mean bigger crits. I like bigger crits. It's the combination of those high crit numbers and the poison that's going to kill enemies. Of course, if you're looking for the best possible rune for this build, you have to include at least one chained deft rune. Increases your critical chance after each hit up to 10 times. And I wanna say, I don't know if stacking runes work. I would guess that it doesn't. A lot of people in the comments and on Reddit seem to think that it does not work, but there's no great way to test that in the game. There's too many factors that change. There's no real good target dummies to test that on. So I would say diversify your runes, use one of each rune to really get the maximum potential for this build. In terms of the lesser runes, you're gonna to wanna to focus on things that increase your crit chance, increase your poison buildup, and then for your armor, anything that's going to make you a little bit more beefy on the battlefield, increased health, increased armor, and if you wanna go with evasion, you can go with that too. Really anything for those minor runes works, but focus on the crit and focus on the poison buildup, and then if you have any runes left over, focus on attack. Now we can't finish up this video without talking about the abilities, and remember, the goal is to kill the enemy as fast as possible. We've got a lot of crit, we've got a lot of poison potential here. Let's capitalize on that by including both the poison strike for melee and range. Those will just complete the build. You can use other things. I chose to use the harpoon impalement, throwing axe fury, and dive at the Valkyries on the melee side. Again, remember, it's all about fluidity. Harpoon impalement is great for manipulating enemy movements. Yes, I know it was nerfed. It's still a really good ability. Die of the Valkyries is still my oh shit button, allows me to knock enemies back, kind of reposition myself if I need to. And I think throwing Axe Fury here is the sleeper hit because what it does when you're surrounded by enemies, it allows you to kind of break the tension and allows you an opening to either attack or run. And I think that works really well in this build. I use it occasionally during the gameplay clips that I'm showing you here, but I really do think this is kind of the sleeper hit of the melee abilities. Now on the range side, you can really use whatever you want. Of course, I always recommend Focus of the Nornir, Mark of Death. Like I said, ranged Poison Strike is a big winner here if you want more poison damage, if you really want to live the Viper lifestyle. And the fourth one here can really be whatever you want. I choose to go with Incendiary Powder Trap. With all that said and done, with all of your items in place, all of your runes equipped and your abilities figured out, it's time to see if this build works the way it should. And let me tell you guys, it is one hell of a build to test out. So fun, so fluid, like I mentioned, that is such an important principle of this build. Being able to literally fly around a battlefield, go from enemy to enemy, take them all out, poison everything in sight, and then if I still want to have some fun, Dive of the Valkyries, Harpoon Impalement, it is really just one of the most fun builds that I've experimented with in the game. And yes, I do know it involves some Helix items, and that's not always great, but honestly, if you have the items, and you wanna try out something different that just feels good, at the end of the day, that's what really matters. When I'm going into combat, does my build feel right? The answer with the Viper is yes. It's one of the most satisfying builds that I've ever used, and I highly suggest you guys check it out. Now, as always, guys, if you have any suggestions, I saw some really great suggestions on how we could change up the Warlord build in the last video. If you have any suggestions about the Viper build, how you would change it up to make it even better, let me know in the comments section below. And as always, if you guys do like this type of video, if you want more builds for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and whatever other games come our way, please do let me know by liking the video and subscribing. It is completely free for you guys. You have shown us nothing but love since we started covering Assassin's Creed, and we cannot thank you guys enough. Anyways, my name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thank you so much for watching, and play on.